Dr. Dot here. Belfast's biggest fan. Back at ya. Just wanted to answer a couple questions for the people who messaged me asking me how did I first come about coming to Belfast, your lovely town, your lovely city. Well, that started um, a long time ago, the early 90s actually. I lived in Berlin, Germany. I'm not German. I lived in Berlin, Germany because I met a German in America at a Grateful Dead show. I moved to Germany to be with him. That kind of fizzled out. I worked at the American PX, which is a um, shop for the military. I'm not, I was not in the military, but I couldn't speak German just yet. So I worked at the American PX and I was in charge of men's athletic shoes. So my customers all day long were British soldiers, French soldiers, and American soldiers. And I had to help them find the shoe that fits. Okay. So at the time, the Irish guards were stationed in Berlin. I got to meet some of them. And I also worked for the British Army doing uh, jingles. They hired me for the BFBS to do radio jingles because they liked the American accent. So I would stay, say stuff like, you're listening to The Soft Spot with Aidan Donovan. Or, I like my breakfast show just like my coffee. Steaming hot. So, anyhow. I met a, a guy named Alistair. I'm not going to say his last name. And he was from Belfast. In fact, his dad was from Bally Castle and his mom is from Coleraine. So, after the British Army, I mean, that um, regiment or whatever they're called, after they left Berlin, I was very heartbroken. So I went to Belfast very often to visit Alistair. Alistair had five brothers. So every time we would go out to clubs, um, they would all get drunk and cause fights with local people. And I would end up being the designated driver, driving all them home. Yeah, so I'm not used to driving on the opposite side of the road nor am I used to those back roads of Bally Castle at night and Bushmills, but I made it work. So I know my way all around Ballantoy, Bally Castle, Bushmills, Coleraine, and all those other areas. Um, and I went to a lot of clubs with them, even though I don't drink. I mean, I barely drank. I didn't drink back then. Now I'll have the occasional wine during the pandemic because, yeah. And um, so I really fell in love with Belfast then. I didn't enjoy coming home covered in blood every night because those brothers really did like to fist fight with local farmers. I don't know. And um, I never forgot Belfast. I always wanted to go back more and more. And then I met another guy named John. I met him in New York City. And he's a big Beatles fan. And I am utterly obsessed with the Beatles. They're my favorite band. And... Um, he kept calling me every night, asking me to come to visit him in Belfast. So I decided to book a room at the Greenmount Bed and Breakfast at that roundabout in Belfast on Valley Falls Road. I think that's what it's called. Anyways, I went to visit him and he didn't pick me up at the airport. He was really weird when I was there. It wasn't the way that I imagined because he was calling me every single day, begging me to come visit him. And he was just too high. Apparently, he got into weed, which is, you know, if you're going to choose weed over girls, I mean, if you're going to choose drugs over um, a woman, I mean, whatever. I'm glad it didn't work out. So I um, walked around that day, wanted to explore Belfast all by myself. And I wandered into the graveyard, and that's how that first graveyard video happened. I was like, just sick of the whole love bullshit. And I asked those guys, can, can I interview you? Can I have a few words with you? And they were like very friendly and nice. And then I carried on and went out and I walked all around Belfast. I think it it's a nine mile radius. The lady who owns the bed and breakfast told me her name's Vivian. She was very scared that I was out alone. I mean, I didn't come home till 5 a.m. I walked all around Belfast by myself. Um, the whole radius of the town. I really wanted a long walk because I just, uh, you know what it's like when you get out of a relationship or whatever. You just want space and to think and everything. And I wasn't afraid at all. I, it was dark and I went in 
to different places to use the bathroom and say hi or whatever, have, have a glass of water. Um, I was never once afraid of anyone in Belfast. I'm not afraid. Everyone is friendly. I love the place. And, um, but I did end up going out to karaoke while I was there. And then I came back um, 10 years later because there is a film production company out of Belfast called Alley Cats. And they approached me online and asked me if I would like to have a documentary done about myself. Because I work with rock stars. I don't know if you know that. But if you look up my website, which is drdot.com, you'll see that my customers are like Kid Rock, um, Paris Hilton, Kanye West, and so on. I have employees all over the world. Like, I'm a massage therapist. And um, my company has 928 employees. And some of them are in Belfast, England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, Germany, Belgium, France, um, Spain, Portugal, all over the world. Anyhow, because I work with so many rock stars, it's obviously there's a lot of good stories to tell. And they asked if they could do a documentary about me. So they flew me over to Belfast and, and we filmed a lot while I was there. And we went to the castle and it was so beautiful. And when we were leaving the castle, I recognized the roundabout. And I said, hey, please, we've got to stop because I recognize this area. I need to go back to that graveyard. And they're like, what? And I go, please just bring me back to the graveyard. I'll only be a minute. So they waited in the car. It was like a cameraman, a sound man, and a film producer, whatever. They waited in the car. And that's when I made part two, Belfast part two. So that's how that happened, yeah. And another another thing I want to address is um, some of the whiners in the comment section of both of my videos, how they get really pissed. They're like, uh, how dare you expose our youth, blah, blah, blah. Well, first of all, it's not me making the youth go to the graveyard. That's not my fault. They probably like to go there because they have freedom, yeah? They want to be left alone from authoritative figures to do whatever the fuck they want to do because that's what young people want to do. They want to hang out with other young people and do their thing. Flirt, talk, maybe have a little drink, whatever. Um, you know, they're friendly to me. I'm friendly back to them. And I'm not apologizing to the haters because that does not happen with me. I'm just telling y'all, if you don't like it, just keep fucking scrolling. You don't have to watch the videos if you don't like it. Like, hating is really, really unattractive. You need to get over that, okay? Yeah. So I will be coming back as soon as the pandemic slash scandemic is over. And um, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I mean, I heard that people from Belfast and the UK, whatever, they're not even allowed to come to America right now. That is fucking really bad that pisses me off um so we're all locked down this is like going on a year now it's almost a year that we're locked down it's, it sucks i want to come over there i'm sure some of y'all want to go over here i mean as soon as the opportunity arises i'm coming right back over there i want to continue making my documentary and guess what i will be coming back to the graveyard you can't stop me so there's that yeah i do love me some belfast that's never going to change.